Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andrew Schmidt. I'm going to be seeing this afternoon the Far West Local Health District's uh, public meeting for 2021. For those people who wish to ask questions, you can use the online question platform, Slido, which is found at www.sli.do. Or for those internally, you can also use the infamous QR code. So I'd like to welcome everybody here joining us uh, via the online portfolio or those joining us here in the room. I'd now like to introduce Dr Andrew Rashulgi, the Board Chair, to provide the Acknowledgement of Country and Chairman's Address. Thanks very much. Thank you all for uh, coming for the uh, presentation or the launch of our uh, um, annual report. The uh, Far West acknowledges the traditional owners of the lands in which the boundaries of the Far West include. Uh, the Barkindji people, the Muthi Muthi, the Wuli Kali, the Yampa, the Wadigali, and the Malayangaba, the Wankamara people. We acknowledge and pay respect to the elders past, present, and their ancient wisdoms. And we acknowledge the communities of today and the Aboriginal community members who are part of our communities. I'm pleased to be able to provide an update to the local health district, of the local health district to you and to the stakeholders and clients. At last year's annual public meeting, I spoke that the past year had been the most challenging of the district and of all of our communities in the far west dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's without doubt that true was true. It's also uh, very much with us for the last, tw uh, last 12 months as well. The pandemic has made its presence acutely felt in the district, particularly in Mulcanya, Broken Hill and south in Wentworth, Devon and Ivanhoe. And we're still experiencing outbreaks and the ramifications of the effect and, the effort and our efforts to uh, contain this virus. The board was acutely aware of the incredible amount of work that was being done by our staff and executive in responding to the outbreaks, and especially the dedication and commitment to working beyond the normal conditions for long periods of time. Our heartfelt thanks and appreciation go out to all our staff for their tireless work from the outset this pandemic and as it continues in ensuring the safety of patients and of their fellow colleagues but also delivering health care, uh, high quality health care to our communities at the same time. Our far west local health district communities are also to be acknowledged for their response to the pandemic. The collaboration with the health service and other agencies in helping people stay safe and supported is to be applauded. Many community minded volunteers uh, work to help support people in isolation, including delivering food and aid packages and helping the health service reach out to people for vaccination and for testing. Our health councils played a vital part in volunteering and helping to keep connected that conduit between the community and the health service. We must also acknowledge that help came to the district from afar with the extra resources from the New South Wales Ministry of Health and many workers from other local health districts coming here to bolster our service and provide immediate, immediate staff relief and to be ready if the demand for medical response increased. They were warmly welcomed and are appreciated, uh, and our appreciation is just as warmly expressed. We are fortunate to receive help from OSMAT uh, in our vaccination efforts across the district. I was uh, talking to the head of the National Critical Care and Trauma Research Centre, um, who manages OSMAT, the other day and explained how their work had been so welcomed and appreciated here uh, and it made such a big difference. And he passed on to me that they enjoyed being here as well. We also had the Australian Defence Force personnel who helped, put, helped on the ground with our vaccination effort. The collaboration between our Far West partners, including the Royal Flying Doctor Service uh, and Murray Mar Aboriginal Health Corporation helped to deliver the vaccine to remote facilities and they continue to do so. I'm sure we're all very grateful for that continued collaboration. When all these components, our partner agencies, external staffing, extra resources come together with the Far West Local Health District in collaboration to face the pandemic threat to each of us, it quickly shows the strength and the resilience when our community faces adversity. I believe the true spirit of the bush was portrayed in stark relief in the far west during this challenging and sometimes confronting times of the COVID-19 pandemic. We must not forget that the pandemic is still with us 
and we remain committed to seeing our communities through it. Our COVID-19 pandemic looms large in the past year, but we also acknowledge that the Far West continue to provide high quality services throughout the district uh, and build on its successes. We celebrated the opening of the newly refurbished Tibbaburra Health Service as Health One, uh, and the planning and start of the construction for Baronga Health One facility as well. And more recently, the announcement and the planning for the new hospital at Wentworth. The collaboration of those communities with the Far West and the Ministry of Health in projects such as these have been and continue to be instrumental in ensuring we provide the right services for the right reasons. The building up of our relationships with our partner organisations, for example, the RFDS, Murray Mar, the University Department of Rural Health, Western New South Wales Primary Health Network and the Rural Doctors Association will continue to be a vital, vitally important going forward as we work to maintain and increase our health services and the delivery of high quality care. On that note, I recommend I commend to you the year in review 2020-2021, a document which is a snapshot of what's been happening across the district in the, in the finance, last financial year. Before I finish, I'd like to also pay thanks to Dale Sutton. Dale's been an amazing woman, uh, a stalwart of Broken Hill, an advocate for Broken Hill, uh, a, uh, a person to go to person in Broken Hill, but has also had her professional work done here uh, to the, to the uh, benefit of the community throughout her whole of, pretty much a whole of a professional life. More recently, over the last few years, she's taken over to manage the clinical governance of the, uh, of the district. It's an area that's always important from a board's point of view and from the community board's point of view. And she has done an exceptionally good job. In fact, the Clinical, Clinical Excellence Commission who was visiting us by Skype the other day was highlighting the change that has happened to the benefit of the, of the Far West through the work that Dale's been overseeing. So thank you very much, Dale, and I'm sorry that you're leaving, but I know that you won't be leaving Broken Hill and we can always call upon you for advice. Can I take this opportunity too to thank the board members and particularly those whose terms came to an end this year, John Harris and Steve O'Halloran. They worked very hard and go with us in guiding the board and ensuring the success of the Far West Local Health District. And can I finally acknowledge the executive and the district staff. Without you, we would have had an absolute disaster. You've ensured that we've got through it. You've ensured that people have been cared for. You've ensured that we've stayed safe. It's been difficult, it's been very difficult, but I thank you very much for the work you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Andrew Shorgi. I'd now like to introduce the Chief Executive, Mr. Urban Agus, to provide the Chief Executive Report. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you, Dr. Shorgi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm pleased to present the annual year in review report for the 2021 financial year for the Far West Local Health District. I commend the year in review 2021 document for you for a snapshot of what has been happening across district during the past financial year and some of our key achievements. It would, I would be remiss of me not to highlight the COVID-19 pandemic and the significant operational and clinical challenges present for the district and it still does to a certain extent. We are still responding to positive cases as was mentioned earlier and outbreaks in our communities with a diligence and responsiveness that is a credit to our hard-working staff. Our response to the pandemic ensured our communities were monitored for the spread of disease with over 11,500 tests during the last financial year and the rolling out of our vaccination program to the most vulnerable and wider population in collaboration with our key partners, such as Royal Flying Doctor Service, Marama and Kumela Health Corporation, among, and as well as um, our GPs, of course, in our community. Virtual care and telehealth have long been a part of our infrastructure in treating our patients and clients. And the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated demand requiring us to upgrade our systems. We received more than 850,000 dollars to overhaul our virtual care systems, enabling more patients and clients to access high quality care from their homes and our visiting specialists to navigate state lockdowns and interstate border closures. 
of which, as you'll agree, we had a number. It also aided our long-held commitment to increasing local access to our communities to minimise the significant social and familial disruption travelling for health can often cause. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged the LHC and its staff and it continues to test our resilience and our ability to respond effectively and in a timely manner. The outbreaks throughout the district and especially in latter half this calendar year present some unique challenges which require equally unique approaches and solutions. Importantly, we we'll learned the importance of engaging the community from the outset and including them in developing responses, responses and actions that were designed for their specific community and their needs. Our use of mobile camp events in Kenya and later Wentworth for community support accommodation to help people um, isolate safely if they're unable to do so at home was innovative and successful. The CSA mobile model continues to be used in the LHD and replicated elsewhere across New South Wales. Our successful manager of the pandemic in Wilcannia attracted a lot of positive interest in this state as well. At Far West, we have a long tradition of innovation and openness to new ideas, and our response to the pandemic further underscores this fact. Throughout the financial year, the LHC maintained its commitment to providing safe, high quality healthcare to our communities as its first priority. We demonstrated this commitment throughout achieving our accreditation in June 2021 for three years against an eight national standards for safety and quality in healthcare. This is a key driver for continual improvements in safety and quality of which all our staff can be justifiably proud. We focus on the future healthcare needs of our communities. Recognising the importance of research in encouraging exploration of current practice and searching for new and better ways to provide care, we engaged our first Director of Research. Professor David Lal is the Head of Brooklyn University Department of Rural Health with the University of Sydney and we welcome him um, certainly with open hearts. Our multi-million dollar building program will see the development of a 30 million hospital in Wentworth, a 10 million dollar health one in Baronga with construction of the integrated primary health care facility awarded to the major, major majority indigenous owned building company BARPA. We officially opened our 1.9 million two bar health service in March and completed upgrades to breast screen and palliative care service at Broken Hill Health Service. We have also commenced the planning process for an upgrade of our mental health inpatient unit to bring it in line with contemporary approach to caring for some of our most vulnerable community members. Our success relies on our people. Our critical healthcare partners, our eight health councils, and our many volunteers and donors who have enabled us to excel in providing excellence in healthcare. We thank them for their invaluable support and commitment to our local health district. The COVID-19 pandemic may have disrupted their activities, but already they are showing a desire to return to business as usual, albeit with an eye for readiness to respond to any fresh outbreak. In the many roles that they undertake across the district, and we warmly welcome them all back. It's also important to acknowledge again our partner organisations for working with us throughout the district, and particularly during the pandemic, when collaboration and sharing knowledge, experience and information became critical in response to the pandemic. These partnerships will be the stronger and ultimately help us deliver better health outcomes to everyone living in, living and working in the far west. I believe it is through part, strong partnerships we will achieve our goal of providing the best possible care to our communities. In closing, it is our staff and executive who work so diligently and with hard-wired commitment and dedication to providing high quality care that we must acknowledge and we do. Thank you to every one of you for all that you have achieved and continue to achieve as the local health district continues to serve the communities that make up the far west. I also want to, of course, thank the board for their immense support <coughs> and guidance throughout this very challenging period. In closing, as I always say, and acknowledge and passionately believe that our togetherness is our strength. Thank you.
Thank you, Umit. I'd now like to ask the Acting Director of Performance and Strategy, Ms Karina Blanco, to provide their financial report. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to give a few key highlights um, from a financial perspective of things that have happened over the 2021 financial year. So the Far West LHD expenditure for 2021 was 131 million, with 60% of the costs attributed to employee related. Of the 131 million, 4.1 of this was related to the COVID pandemic. Far West revenue for the 2021 financial year was 125 million, with 89% of this received from the New South Wales Ministry of Health in the form of recurrent funding. Far West have retained the highest possible New South Wales Health Performance Rating of zero performance. The Audit Office of New South Wales provided an unqualified audit opinion on the 2021 financial statements. Funding has been secured for the Wentworth Hospital development. The total value of the redevelopment is just over $30 million. Clinical service planning is being finalised after community consultation. Health infrastructure is in the process of finalising the tender for the architect, the project manager and a cost manager. And this is anticipated to be completed in the 2024 financial year. Baronga Health One is progressing well with an anticipated completion around mid-2022 um, with the project value just over $9 million. As part of our contribution to environmental sustainability, Far West have invested in solar panels for the Broken Hill Health Service and a number of other associated buildings, including across the district. A safe haven cafe was established, which provides a non-clinical compassionate space for people experiencing suicidal crisis. We also invested in a new bus for Bell Ranald, replacing the 20-year-old bus which is used for tra patient transport and aged care services. So the Far West invested just over, just under $6 million in capital expenditure, which is excluding the Health One Barocca. Our investment in technology related services enabled us to quickly activate enhanced telehealth services, which were required due to the COVID imposed restrictions. The Broken Hill Kiosk Auxiliary donated over 125000 towards the purchase of equipment for the Broken Hill Hospital. Other donations of significance for the purchase of equipment in the 2021 year came from Bequest, the Tipperborough Family Two-Storey Hotel, the Broken Hill Family Daycare and the Breast Support Group. And in closing, um, Far West provided travel bookings for 10 districts, so that's gone up by two compared to the previous year and specialty networks and continue to be recognised for ex excellence in travel services for New South Wales Health. Thank you. Thank you very much to Karina. I'll just check with Louise whether we have any questions from the audience on the Slido forum. No questions. We then move to, once again, invite uh, Uma back to provide the closing sur uh, summary. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, before I um, conclude, I do want to uh, pay special, um, um, I guess, um, compliment to um, Dale Sutton. Um, Dale has been, a, uh, as Andrew said, has been an, an amazing um, executive, uh, particularly um, uh, supportive of my role. Um, you know, I came in, into the role, sort of um, eyes wide open. And I really uh, benefited from uh, Dale's guidance and support in that time. And um, and I think she's leading uh, an organisation um, in a far better place than it certainly was two years ago. And um, and certainly um, I do owe uh, Dale probably a number of um, uh, bottles of wine <laughs> um, uh, when she was um, organising us to pass our recruitation, which was no... Um, easy task, I assure you. Um, I think she's spent countless nights awake, <laughs> awake in bed um, planning the next day as to how we're going to sort of manage it. 
and we did it. We did it with uh, amazing uh, success. Where we didn't get any, um, you, know, uh, you know, recommendations that um, we needed to address. Um, we've got, um, if you um, suggested us that we can do things better, um, certainly, uh, Father is nothing but open to new ideas, and we'd like to hear from really all comers. Um, so, again, Dale, thank you. A well-deserved break after 41 years um, in Far West. It's amazing, just amazing. Um, I also look again want to highlight um, uh, what a uh, challenging year that we've had this year. Uh, it's been made mention a number of times. Uh, I can assure you that um, our staff, for certainly at least three months, um, you know, worked seven days around the clock. Uh, quite a large number here did certainly, and right across the board. Uh, what a robust you know, staff came forward and volunteered. Often I would get asked. Um, why are your arm staff smiling still after three months? They're still smiling when they're swabbing us or giving us vaccination. And look, and that is the really the, the hallmark <laughs> of, of followers. Um, you know, people, our staff are from here, or when they come here, they become part of the family. They care about the community, and it's reflected in the way they interact, in the way they show commitment. And for that, I am eternally grateful. So, in closing, I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance. And, um, and again, well done to all our staff and partners for another year. Well done. Uh, we'll do bigger and better things next year. Thank you. And before I go, of course, I've got a little gift. <laughs> no, this is for you, Andrew. I also want to thank Andrew. He's always been a great supporter of Farwes LHC in our community. Just a little appreciation of. Uh, Talking about appreciation. Thank you very much, Ermin. I actually thought it was a dial. After <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, last year's, um, yes, well, I got it wrong. All right. <laughs> She's got to get the golden handshake here. Uh, that brings us to a close. Uh, I do know that Dale's husband has bought a lawnmower and a whipper snipper. That'll keep her busy for the first six months. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much. I now like to.